Today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of lacing your shoes properly. Unlike the early 1900s when we had shoes like this that went above the ankle and had to fasten with a button hook, we have today shoes, all we have to do is put them on and tie our laces. Well, what happens? We have people coming to us, they're at home a lot more right now, they're wearing slippers, they're not getting in their shoes, they're getting in the shoes, they're not tying their shoes, and nobody's bothered to check what they've been wearing or how long they've been wearing it. So we've talked to you before about getting supportive shoes. Let's go into a few tips about how lacing can make a difference. First of all, bothering to tie the shoes at all is really important. Lacing up the shoe, pulling from the toe box area all the way up, not just tying the top at first, and then tying the shoe off. Goes a long way to helping keep the foot where it belongs, back in the shoe and avoiding the toes from jamming in front. Next, the heel of the shoe is important and must be stable. Don't just kick off your shoes at night all the time. Untie the laces and then take the shoe off. I know it's kind of a pain, but guess what? If you untie them at night, in the next morning they'll be ready to put back on again. All right, let's go to some specifics about the lacing. Sometimes people come in with foot problems in the front of the foot with things such as Morton's neuroma, a pinched nerve in the front of the foot. I found that for that, while it's being treated, Skipping the lace up towards the toe, the first one, and starting one notch further back will allow more expansion for the front of the shoe and a little less pressure on the front of the foot and that neuroma. If you're having troubles with the top of your foot, as happens with a high arched foot, and the top here is rubbing on the shoe and gets irritable when you tie the shoe properly, then you need to change the lacing. The change that can help is by starting at the bottom and then instead of crisscrossing every eyelid, go up one first, then cross over, up one, and then over one. Doing that, you can see you end up with less crisscrosses and less pressure across the instep. The nerves of the feet, the sensory nerves, are very close to the skin and you don't want to compress them and just from shoelaces being too tight across that foot type can cause constant irritation and temporary numbness in the foot. Finally, we have the issues of the foot that slips forward too much. And besides just tying the laces, two alternatives can help keep the foot further back in the shoe. One is to add a pad over the tongue of the shoe on the inside. These can be purchased that fit here, and then that will help hold you back. If that alone isn't enough, or if the pad is bothersome, instead, just in terms of the lacing, what we've done here is that on the top, on each side, instead of crossing over, I brought the lace up and made a little loop. And the same little ear on the other side. Then, the laces, instead of just being tied, come through the loop on each side. And when this is pulled, this gives extra security at the top of the shoe and will help hold your foot back in that shoe. So with these simple measures, you can take your feet and keep them healthier during this time when we may be walking a lot more than usual. And now that summer's approaching and the parks are opening up, getting back out there on our trails, on our bicycles, doing all the activities we want to do, using these feet more. Keep your feet happy, keep them healthy, and stay safe.